Hi there, my name's Jane Anderson and this is the Jane Anderson Brand You Show. It's the podcast for experts who want to have greater impact, influence and income for their businesses and careers. As experts, we know that people buy from people and work with people who they know, who they like and who they trust. So I am so glad you're here because it's that time again now to really amplify how you show up in the world. So welcome to the show today. It's uh, the Jane Anderson Brand You Show and I'm so excited to be able to introduce our guest today. As you know, we love to be able to get in sort of um, under the under the hood or or behind the scenes and find out a little bit about people who have personally branded businesses. And, and as you know, the Brand You Show is all about positioning and positioning is, is the way to be able to stand out from the crowd. Um, and it's not about standing out and saying, I'm so good or, you know, um, blowing our own trumpets or anything like that. And, but it's more about people connect from, with people and they connect with people who they know, like and trust. And I'm absolutely wrapped to be able to connect today with uh, with a wonderful personal, personally branded person, <laughs> uh, business owner. And uh, so our guest today is a is a people whisperer. She's been working with leaders and teams to improve their communication and interpersonal intelligence for almost a decade. She brings to her clients a recognised expertise in the field of below conscious. Uh, communication and motivation. She is obsessed with decoding people and performance dynamics for improved results. Our guest today, she's she's an accomplished speaker, she's an author, a mentor, and she's published two books on shifting human behaviour, and that's to assist coaches and facilitators. And she has her third book coming out very shortly called Developing Direct Reports, Taking the Guesswork Out of Leading Leaders. Her flagship leadership program for young professionals was a recent finalist in the 2014 Learn X Awards, which is just a phenomenal achievement. Um, for anyone that knows the Learn X Awards, they know um, that uh, the prestige that comes with that. It's a fantastic achievement. And she was a proud finalist in the ANSI Coaching's Coach of the Year Award in uh, 2010. And she's also earned the designation of a Master Coach in 2012. She has an extraordinary list of um, other things that she is a member of. So she's she's a member of ANZIC, ARI. She um, uh, has a background and did her um, bachelor degree in HR and she's moved into really advanced type work in terms of coaching, NLP, uh, team dynamics and, and training as well. So I am so excited to introduce to you Annalie Blundell. Annalie, thank you so much for coming along today. I'm so excited to have you on. Thank you, Jane. I, I was listening to your introduction thinking, wow, that is long. Is that really me? <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely thank you. you. <laughs> <laughs> Terrific. Oh. You, you just have done, you know, your journey. Oh, the other thing I forgot to mention, which I highlighted here, and I love this about Emily, that she, uh, uh, she is a professional people whisperer. She's a skilled parallel parker. Now, that is impressive. <laughs> and uh, she's a running salsa and rollerblading addict. And uh, so I love that. We get to get a bit of <laughs> Annaly personality in there too. So, um, so you know, you've, you've achieved <laughs> so much, Annaly. It's just such an extraordinary journey you've been on. Um, you know, how did you get into all this and what made you go down this path of, of your business so you've come from a corporate sort of background and then moved into your own type work was that something that you always knew would happen for you well it's interesting I I always had a, an idea that I would have my own business so I come from the banking and finance sector mm -hmm. um, had a you know I'm a corporate refugee like a lot of us are <laughs> and, and um, I always had a sense that I would have my own business but being that I had a business degree, mm. I thought I would do the quote-unquote sensible thing <laughs> and make sure that I wasn't trading uh, dollars for time, you know, my time, because that's not how, that, that's not sustainable. You can't leverage that. You know, time has a cap. Yes. So you, bet, you better get a turnkey business kind of like uh, Michael Gerber from the E-Myth suggests. Oh, yes. Yep, 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 that's a smart thing to do and then you can leverage that and you can build it up and sell it off and, you know, that's all very sensible and I thought, yeah, that's really sensible 
Um, but what about if you really love what you do and, in fact, you're so invested in developing your skills in a particular area that you become the product and what's more, you're now so specialised that you can't even replicate yourself, then what do you do? <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. I remember thinking, oh, well, this is not really the turnkey business I expected to have. I've ended up exactly where I thought I wouldn't be. Oh, right. And and I'm so grateful that I am and I would not change it for a single thing in the world. Oh, well that's, that's such a massive insight. Um, you know, I think I, not that I went down that path. I didn't have a turnkey but there was a few opportunities that came along that way and, and I, can, I can see exactly what you're saying. You know, that there's a temptation because all those things are set up. And yeah. you go, oh, great, but then you're the same, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> you just blend in. It's not... That you don't you become like uh, we talk about toothpaste on the supermarket shelf and you just kind of <laughs> blend in so so in terms of the the type of business you have now who who do you help and how do you help them well, that's a good question so mostly right now my clients are individual executives you know, leaders of teams um, right through to enterprise wide um uh, interventions. So it might be anything from working one-on-one -on -one with an executive, particularly around their interpersonal intelligence. So this is engagement, influence, impact, everything about how they show up mm -hmm. and how that's affecting and infecting when it comes to mm -hmm. contagious things like emotions and engagement and satisfaction um, of the people around them. So I might do work individually. It might be with an executive wanting to influence board outcomes. That can be quite tricky, you know, navigating the politics and the people dynamics in very um, kind of intense situations like some board communications or conversations can be. Mm -hmm. It might be working with teams. Uh, again, what I find is that there's a lot of stuff that goes on within teams that is going on below the surface so the overt um, the overt goals and tasks and responsibilities of people who work together in a team you know if they're explicit that's great but the stuff that really derails performance and gets in the way or increases people's ability to perform is really the team dynamics you know how people are interacting with one another how they're judging one another because unfortunately we're humans before we are any kind of position you know or role and our tendency is to get annoyed with people our tendency is to make assumptions and judge people mm -hmm. and respond to our assumptions and misinterpretations of others actions and intentions rather than working on that to um to find out what's really going on so that we, you know we're on the same page in, and leveraging our opportunities and strengths mm -hmm. so individual executives, teams, and then enterprise-wide, um, for example, with things like new leaders programs. So that's quite a big one for me right now, helping new leaders really pick up their personal power as they're moving into their positional power because moving from buddy to boss yeah. can be quite a big transition. Oh, absolutely. You know, and I think um, in a personal branding sense, I think you know the data we see is even... Uh, some of the things online you know like you said the buddy side of it you know, I think the average person team member has 15 friends at work on their Facebook page and mm -hmm. uh, and it, it, that is such a challenge for new leaders isn't it to yeah. distance themselves in yeah. a way that will still allow them to be effective but still be able to be connected to their exactly. team mm. yeah that's right and there's a whole lot of things in terms of their credibility and I, and I talk mm. about this a lot particularly with um uh, with new leaders and also surprisingly really um, experienced executives because and the topic around this is credibility so your credibility is making a statement uh, very quickly in regard to your tonality in regard to your word choice your body language mannerisms not all your nonverbal cues uh -huh. People are picking them up so quickly at, a, at an unconscious level way before they're taking in anything that you're saying. So the, the whole notion of going from buddy to boss, same thing as, um, you know, making a presentation to the board or whatever the case may be, if, you're, if your nonverbal cues are leaking out in a non-credible way, yes, you can yes. absolutely be undoing anything that your positional power might be suggesting you're capable of. 
So there's a whole lot of stuff, you know, to navigate the complexity around how people interpret you, how they see you, and how your particular interpersonal intelligence um, can be impacting your results on so many levels. Wow. So I haven't heard that term before, interpersonal intelligence, but it makes sense when you hear it straight away. Mm. And, um, and so... Um, and when you do this work, it, it, I, these would be things that you're unaware of. Like, like as if I started working with you, if I'm in your leadership program or something, um, I wouldn't be aware that that's what's coming up or would I be aware of some of it but maybe I've thought about it but I hadn't really been too conscious of it. And is this what you mean by those conscious communications? Yeah, so there's, it's, it's actually in both camps. So right. some of it you're aware of in others uh -huh. because okay. research tells us that we can see others much more clearly than we can see ourselves. Okay. So um, you're probably aware of what's credible and non-credible behaviour in other people, yet when it comes to you, you may have absolutely no idea about how uh, that head gesture or how you're rocking from side to side or that <laughs> flipping little thing you do with the pen all the time is actually... Um, sabotaging your credibility and, and distracting people from your message. So it's our own little things that we often can't see, although we can pick it in others. Yeah, right. <laughs> Such attention to detail, isn't it? Right. That's amazing. I know, and the funny thing about this is it's the things like um, we don't, I think we really underestimate our, I mean, you're, you'd be all over this, right? So you've got a book called Impact mm. and you're all about the personal branding. And so we come from a very similar space. Mm. And for me, from my perspective, just little things like knowing that um, if you use a certain tone of voice yes. with your staff members or with people around you, that they deem to be dominant or condescending in any kind of way yes. you've automatically impacted their engagement yes and you may have had absolutely no intention to do that and, and typically what happens is we judge other people by their behaviors but we judge ourselves by our intentions right so we're always fine like well i didn't mean that i mean you might have heard this someone say well i didn't mean it like that yes. well nobody means it like that <laughs> but Unfortunately, you know, uh, perception is reality. So it doesn't matter what you intend by way of your leadership legacy or your conversational footprint. It actually doesn't matter what you meant. It only matters what they hear. Yeah. Yes. And so bridging this gap to find out, you know, if it's a tone thing, if, you know, if you're quite sharp with people and you don't mean to be but you're busy. Yes. But they read into it a whole number of things that you don't intend. So just being aware that that is even a possibility mm. means you can be conscious of it. It means you can undo damage if you have done some damage. You know, you can actually have some flexibility around this, have some choice. Yes. Yeah, awareness creates choice, doesn't it? And yes. uh, and yeah. you've got such a unique program. I, I just think that's fantastic. I, th I don't think I've heard where um, a program's gone to that level of detail and uh, uh, that's just I'm so... I'm inspired. I can't, and I wouldn't talk about your book because I'll be keen to hear a bit more about that. And um, so, Anneli, you just touched before on, you know, you, you were the corporate refugee and um, you were in this turnkey style of business. And then, but now you've got AnneliBlundell.com and .com.au. So, what was the trigger point or what was it that made you make that shift to annaleblundell.com or .com.au? Well, actually, business mentors. So um, I got some very good advice from people I highly respect mm -hmm. that it was time to move to a stronger position around positioning mm -hmm. um, and to move to my own name, .com, .com. And I have to say I resisted. For 12 months. Right. I resisted with all my might because I had a whole lot of stories and a lot of things I was telling myself like, oh, you must love yourself, you've got tickets on yourself, you know, how good do you think you are? You're going to go out there and be AnneliBlundell.com, really? Do you think you're Oprah? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, like I, because the only people I know that have businesses like that are people like Oprah, yes. Madonna, yes. Kylie, you know, Beyonce. And I'm sort of thinking, do I think I'm Beyonce? <laughs> so to be honest, it did take me a little while to sort of 
step into that, into my own name, really, mm-hmm. which is a bit weird. Mm-hmm. But as soon as I did it, the most amazing thing happened because I moved from an entity outside of myself, which is a little bit cold. It's a little bit, you know, it's a corporate identity. Yeah. So it wasn't really me. It was a corporate, a kind of cold identity. Right. And, and what, and, you know, it has that kind of, um, dissociated feel to it and now what I find is when I moved into my own branding and I had to redo my website I had to really think about who am I and what is my legacy what is my space Mm -hmm. you know what is the niche that I play in what am I really about and that just that exercise alone made me so clear on who I want to work with the kind of work I want to do and what I'm really all about it was fantastic and for the work that you did to get clear about who you were, like that's it's quite intense work. Was that a, a long process? Like was that something that took kind of a year to get clear on as well or was that something you just knew and it was just a matter of making it come to life or how did you, how did you come to that conclusion that you knew, how did you know that that was what you were, were going to be? Yeah, I wish I wish it just fell in my lap, but it didn't. Mm. I, um, so apart from resisting the whole notion of the move across for twelve months, uh, I think part of it was just not being clear and going, well, because I've been packaging myself under this corporate brand. Yes. What I do is I deliver commodities. So I deliver I, I deliver the how I deliver coaching. Yes. I deliver training. I deliver facilitation. You know that kind of stuff. So I'm delivering these. Um, commodities that anyone can get from anywhere. Right. And so that's, you know, that's really quite easy to market. It's really quite easy to explain. Coaching is coaching. Yes. Right. Um, but all of a sudden when you're no longer selling a commodity because you're selling your passion, you're selling your expertise and your obsession, it really, the questions are more around, well, what are you passionate about? What is the thing that's actually driving everything you do? Right. And and what is the lens that you're looking at the world through mm-hmm. that you deliver your coaching through and your training to and your um, facilitation to? So you have to really step back mm-hmm. and say, what is that all about? So for me, that was a long process, 12 months right. at least. And, uh, and I don't think this has to be the same for everyone. I mean, I'm sure that some people will wake up with a burning, you know, fire in their belly going, oh, it's all about this. And I say to you, <laughs> God, you're lucky. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Um, but that wasn't the case for me. So it was a, it's a case of just questioning, asking those questions, letting stuff evolve and just looking at the things that kept drawing me and the things I kept talking about and the stuff that just kept coming into my world and going, you know what, it's this. And it was almost like, um, um, oh, what's the name of the woman with the red ruby slippers, no place like home. Jesus, uh, what's her name? Um, Dorothy. Dorothy. Dorothy, thank you. Yes, by the time I sort of came out with what it was, you know, this whole interpersonal intelligence piece, the whole how I impact you and how you impact me and how that impacts our collective result, Mm -hmm. it was like a a, a Dorothy moment. It was, oh, that's so obvious. (laughs) It's It's all about connection. It's all about influence, impact and engagement and it always has been, how did I not see that? (laughs) Wow. So as a matter of kind of... It was just um, finding this thread that ran yes. through everything, and what's this thread? And and uh, I think that's something that I certainly see with clients is that it can be frustrating if they don't see it straight away. And yeah. um, and it's been kind to yourself. Did you find that you just had to be patient and just keep keep aware of the patterns that were coming through that you could see? Yes, and I think that's absolutely the key, mm. Jane. In this instance, what I did was I just held the question, mm-hmm. what's this really about? What's this really about? What am I really about? You know, what's my passion? What's my obsession? Um, and I would just, you know, I'd do a piece of work and go, God, that was fantastic. I just loved that. Why? Right. What was it about? What was I doing? Oh, that was the piece because I got to impact this person at this level. Mm. Great. That is really important. Okay. And then right. just sort of noticing all these pieces and then looking, what's the general theme around that? And then finding that those words that say, you know what? It's the interpersonal intelligence space. It's the space between you and me. 
And yeah. it starts from within. Both people have to start from within, but then you need an eye on how I impact you. Otherwise, right. I'm not I'm not a lone system. I operate within a social system. Yes. So it's not enough to have self awareness. It's integral, but it's not enough. Right. So it's taking that to the next level and going. I need to have self awareness. I need emotional intelligence, but I also need social intelligence. If I don't know how I impact other people and how the way I show up is affecting my ability to influence, to engage, to impact, then what's the point of having the awareness? Right. And so it sounds like it was like quite a lot of refinement just over the time to be able to get to that point. You know, I think, I don't know if you find it, I find when I'm doing this work with people that it's hard to get clarity but then once I've got clarity, sometimes it goes to concrete. And I and I well, it it evolves and changes, and so it's a living beast as you evolve and change, and which is kind of the beauty of working under your name dot com is that you've got that flexibility. So yeah. you know, as you start to see different patterns emerge um, and different threads emerge, because you who knows you could not be doing that in five years time. You could be doing something else. So, but um, it sounds like it was a, just a constant refinement for you until you got that. Would that be right? Yeah, I think you're right. And also, you're right. One of the um, unknown benefits to me, what I didn't realize, mm -hmm. was that prior to this, prior to branding myself under com, I had two business names. So I've had two iterations of business right. names. Okay. And, and therein lies a problem. So, you know, my first six years, I was beyond coaching because I started as a coach and that's what I was doing and I thought that was a great name and it was a great name, but I very quickly evolved to doing coaching and training and, you know, keynote presentations and, and it just became more, way more than coaching very quickly. Right. And so all of a sudden I faced a problem where that business name no longer, it wasn't big enough for what I was doing. Yes. So then I moved to the next name, and, but I found the same problem. As soon as I, it's like, you know what happens? As soon as you re redo all your marketing collaterals and you spend squillions of dollars updating all your branding, I swear to God, that's the day you go, you know what? It's more than that. <laughs> it's, no, it's no longer that. It's more, it's more yep. than that. And yep. so the unintended wonderful benefit that I've noticed is I go, my name, my brand, my business is AnnaLeeBlundell.com. And I'm always going to be that name. I'm not going to change my name. Yes. It doesn't matter what I'm doing. And I might tweak what I write on my website. I might tweak some of the programs I offer. I might even tweak the major overarching um, filter that I see my world through. But I'm never going to change my name. Yes. And I'm always going to be doing this kind of work. Yes. So I will never do a rebranding again. <laughs> <laughs> what a relief. It's such a relief, isn't it? I've had the same same thing and I think that's quite interesting about you know even things like um, where you've you know you're known as, as the people whisperer but you haven't necessarily had to create your business as peoplewhisperer.com and because you know that's more a, a promise that sits with it sits under annaleeblundell.com but it's still um, it's something that that's there but it, it, you don't have to trip over that to get to you. Exactly. And in fact, that was um, when I came up with that people whisperer, I was a little bit, you know, unsure about it because, oh, again, it seems a bit kitschy. I'm thinking, oh, really? Oh, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to fly. Will it really work? And so I tested it a little bit in the market and, and I had, it, it was very polarizing. So right. people either loved it and when they loved it, wow, they really <laughs> loved it. And I saw all sorts of iterations of a similar thing popping up on LinkedIn I thought wow it must be you know <laughs> people must really like it right. and then I also heard um I've had clients say you know look I'm going to introduce you to my client and I'm just going to quickly fluff over the whole people whisper thing because I think that will put them off but I, I'll let them know that you're not a fluffy you know you're not a fluffy um <laughs> You know, um, yes. Guru Swami kind of, you know, that you're grounded and, you know, you're normal right. and practical when I say, okay, good, good. And I thought, oh, I didn't realise it was a problem. So it's either a problem that needs to be overcome because I seem too far from where they are mm -hmm. and where that where that label or word might take them yes. or I'm right there. And what I've noticed at the moment, and I don't know if I'll keep it forever, but at the moment it's getting enough conversation that it's right. worth it. Yeah, okay. That's Right, so you can still use it as part of your marketing, but mm. it just doesn't have to be your domain name and the business name. 
Exactly. Yeah. yeah, great. And you can take it out if it's not appropriate for the market and leave it in if it is and you've yep. got that flexibility. Right. Exactly. Okay. Um, and so what have you noticed is uh, you talked about the benefit of flexibility. Have there been any other benefits that you've noticed uh, that's made it a bit easier since going to yourname.com? Yeah, I think one of the one of the things I've noticed is um, well, firstly I've previously done a lot of collaboration, so I work with a lot of specialists. I get called in, for example, on you know coaching panels um, as the person who does communication and influence. Here's a special, here's our specialist person in this kind of category. Okay. And when you have your own brand, there's always a discussion around branding do we brand under you do we brand under me do we do a co joint branding do we have no brand you know it's always this discussion whereas now my branding is my branding I can't I'm, I'm not gonna I can't pretend my yes. name is not my name yes. <laughs> you know so it doesn't matter whether I have my brand on there or not because if people want to google me because of the work I've done they will see my name and it is me and it's not a conflict of interest because my name is my brand yes, yes. and it's yeah, it's just that that has been actually delightful, mm. uh, I have to say. Um, and also what it means is it's I've noticed a difference in my positioning. Mm. So there's something around if you if you Google a website and you see a business name mm -hmm. and <clears throat> unless you go to the, you know, who's who section, you can look at that and go, all right, so that company is uh, providing certain services yes. and they're getting in anybody. It, they could get anybody, right? Right. You, you don't necessarily know that. You know you're buying, maybe you're buying, I don't know, leadership training, let's say. Uh -huh. So you go to a company, you're buying leadership training. When you go to a website that is branded by the person, you're actually going there because you're looking for something in particular. Yes. So you're looking for a particular specialty and expertise in a fine niche. So you know this person is going to be, Thin and deep yes. in their in their expertise, mm -hmm. um, and I've even had uh, peers of mine so who do what I do right. call me up and say uh, I'd like to introduce people I don't know actually so doing similar work to me but I don't know them personally have gone to my website and gone this is exactly what I need I've got some issues with the team it's not really my it's a little bit out of my depth right um, but what you do is exactly what they need. I need a specialist to come in and sort out the dynamics. Right. And I go, yeah, that's positioning. Yeah, that's positioning. That's positioning. When your peers come to you for your slice of obsession, <laughs> I think that's positioning. <laughs> yeah, I like what you said. Just it's that it, it's thin. It's thin, but you're going so deep. And mm. um, and then from a from then you've got the adaptability to go across those different markets, don't you? Because yes. you really do have such a deep knowledge of that. It's just the application in this environment. Yes. Right. Um. Uh. And so if 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 someone was if you were if someone's listening to this and thinking about um. Uh, considering building their business or creating a business going, oh, do I go on a myname.com or would I go on a business name? Um, what would your advice be for them? I would say if you can get your head around it, <laughs> do it sooner than later. Mm. Um, th there's something about the all-encompassing flexibility mm. of branding under your own name in terms of you can your business can go wherever you go and if this is really about in the age of commoditization and everything's available uh, and it, we're really trying to stand out you know everyone's trying to stand out they're trying to um, stand out from the noise and differentiate yes. you can't be any more different than if you just be you. you. Really, that I mean, it's so it sounds so simple and almost a bit trite. But the best way to be different is to just be you. Yes. So, why wouldn't branding as you be the ultimate in positioning? Um, and it gives you the ultimate in flexibility to grow and develop and adapt who who you are and what it is you want to do in the world. Yes. 
Um, so I think in terms of flexibility and plus, trust me, trust me, you will save oodles of cash. Absolutely. On <laughs> Absolutely. Oodles of cash and time and time and going through every document that you've ever done and rebranding. Oh, don't even get me started. Don't get me started. <laughs> I hear you. I totally hear you, Annalise. It's, it's such, it's refreshing to go, oh, wow, why didn't I do this years ago? This is yeah. Uh, you know why didn't someone tell me this <laughs> you know yes. and I don't know about you but I find sometimes people are a bit scared that they're they're going to play too small by having they're trying to to you know say uh, well what if I want to build a really big business doesn't if I have my name won't it appear like appear like I'm just a micropreneur a solopreneur and I well the first thing is you can still turn over a significant um, salary and you can still pull a, a significant um, income under your name.com then I then I don't know about you but I say well look at Brian Tracy you know <laughs> there's only one Brian Tracy but he's got Brian Tracy International and he's yep. been around a long time and he's got uh, a huge uh, business and yeah. international business so um, is that what you would find as well that it's it doesn't restrict you for how big you want to grow absolutely and I think too it, uh, as well as that it gives you untold flexibility mm. actually yes. because you can if you've got the positioning right as I said before you can get called in to do high value work yes for as in high value to the organization or to the client and high value to you it's a it's a wonderful exchange yes. because you're doing very specialist work so um, you would expect it's like being the, the difference between being uh, I don't know a GP and specialist surgeon. Yes. So you're still trading time for money. You're still turning up in the same way. But why wouldn't you position yourself in a way that means you can do the exact kind of work you want to do yes. in the exact kind of way you want for the for um, the kind of value that's that suits your positioning? Why yes. wouldn't you do that? Oh, there's just so much in this, Annalie. I, I, you've got, and I love how you articulate it. You know, you make it. Um, you you can tell how uh, pragmatic you are with this, and uh, and so it's so refreshing to hear it. And I'm sure that for those listening, uh, would be going, oh yeah, I need to go and check out Annalie's site so I can see what she's she's talking about. So, um, you know, because particularly you've done that journey yourself, and like you, I've spent a lot of money on on uh, on collaterals and marketing and rebuilding websites and taking this program down and put this one up and yeah. and uh and you know there's a lot of self-doubt that sometimes comes because it takes so much longer um so I'd love to know what your plans are for the next 12 to 18 months you've got your book coming out shortly so I'd love to know a bit about that and uh what else is on the radar for you yeah absolutely so the book is coming out so the developing direct reports is uh, almost hot off the press we should be expecting um the ability to buy that through Amazon in August, uh -huh. so that's coming out soon, which is terrific. Great. Um, um, I've got quite a lot of writing on the go at the moment. So apart from the, the normal client work, yes, the things that I'm most excited about is a the book because it's been four years of my life and I'm ready wow. to give birth to this baby. <laughs> um, and so my two co-authors were all very excited. Uh -huh. um, the second thing is uh, my next book project, which is embryonic, but it's taking shape slowly. And this is around the notion of contagion. So mm -hmm. something like contagion, how leaders spread a culture of engagement, high performance and satisfaction in the workplace. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so what I'm really excited about this is this, is this notion of the impact. Again, it's that interpersonal intelligence piece, right? So does the leader, do you realize as a leader that you are contagious? Your moods wow. are contagious, you know, your um, attitudes are contagious. And so typically what we find is, you know, we're always talking about how do we impact other people, how do we drive engagement, how do we influence others, how do we invite them to step into the best versions of themselves when we're developing leaders. And really for me the answer is stop looking outside at the other person and start looking inside and going, well, you're setting the tone. Yes. The way you think about someone, if you think they're capable and you have high, um, you have a high belief in their capability even though they don't, mm -hmm. you single-handedly invite them into a greater version of themselves and 
The opposite is true. If you think they're crap yes. and you, you don't <laughs> buy into their capability at all, chances are that when they're around you, everything will go wrong. So not only are your moods contagious, but your expectations are contagious. Yes. So if we just sort of stop thinking about others and sort of start inward a little bit more and start thinking about, all right, if I want to drive engagement, what is it that I'm doing? How am I impacting uh -huh. this engagement? Um, I think we'll see the power of contagion at its best. So that's my that's wow. my big project for the next 12 to 18 months. Well, we'll be keeping an eye out for that one. That sounds like a, 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 such an exciting project and, um, you know, the way you articulate this stuff, I think, you know, people, oh, yeah, yeah, I haven't really thought about it that way before. Mm -hmm. Do you find that? <clears throat> yeah, yes, I do. I, I hear that a lot and I think, oh, really good. What did I say? Quick, <laughs> <laughs> write it down. Back. Just back to me. <laughs> So, Annalie, I'm sure that um, uh, there'll be people listening who will want to find out more about the work that you're doing and uh, and to be inspired by you as well. Uh, so, what's the best way for people to find you? My website, which mm -hmm. is www. Drumroll, yes, <laughs> yes, it's AnnalieBlundell.com. Uh -huh. uh, it's A W -N, N E L I Blundell, B L U N D E W -L, L. Dot com and all the information's on there. Knock yourself out. Love to say hello. So if you want to shoot me an email and if there's anything I can do, happy to engage, help out anywhere I can. Fantastic. We do talk a little bit about LinkedIn with, with some guests. And you're on LinkedIn. You put your um, posts on LinkedIn. Can people follow you there too? Oh, absolutely, yes. Yeah. So I'm very um, – I'm a little bit prolific on LinkedIn, I'm afraid. Yes, I do lots of um, blog posts and lots of great conversations. I'm constantly – um, posting articles and videos and my own work and other people's work that I see around this space. So nice. definitely on LinkedIn. Also on Twitter, um, uh, at Annalyn Blundell on Twitter and, of course, my website. So they're probably the main three ways that you can um, get in touch with me. Okay. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for inspiring us all today. What a wonderful way to, it's the end of the week here, but some people might not be listening to it at the end of the week, it might be the start of the week. So you get to <laughs> kick off your week with Anne Lee. That's an exciting start to the week. But um, thank you so much for joining us. We know how busy you are. You've got uh, so much exciting stuff on the go. So thank you for um, sharing your wisdom with us. And uh, I know you'll have inspired a lot of people out there. So, so thank you very, very much. My very pleasure. Thank you, Jane. Appreciate it.